Hello, my name's Lee Edwards. I'd like to give you my testimony. Back in the uh, mid-1940s and late 1940s, early 1950s, the Edwards family was in real trouble. My dad was a, addicted to alcohol. He was uh, controlled by the alcohol, and he was helpless and hopeless. And the situation with dad was very, very bad, and it made our family life bad. And so typically on, uh, during the week, dad would drink uh, a half a pint of hard list whiskey, 100 proof, that's 50% alcohol. He'd drink it every day, Monday through Friday. On, on the weekends, he would drink a fifth, two, two fifths. Now a fifth, as I understand it, was like a fifth of a gallon. <laughs> so he drank a lot. Some people, when they drink uh, and get drunk, they get happy, and, but dad was not that way. He got mean. And so a lot of times on Friday evenings, my mother would take me and we'd either go to the home of a friend or a relative because dad was extremely bad on the weekends. Typically, when we came back on uh, Sunday evening, dad would be passed out on the floor, sometimes in his own vomit. And so that was our life. We were consumed, and, and, and Dad was consumed and addicted to the alcohol. I remember one uh, Sunday night, Dad was not home. We got a call that uh, Monday morning, Dad was in jail. Dad was known as Blackie in Covington, Kentucky, which is a northern part of Kentucky uh, uh, and a, uh, a suburb of Cincinnati, greater Cincinnati area. And he was in jail and mom and I went to the jail and it was, my j dad had been in jail several times because of his drinking and fighting. He was a fighter. And uh, when I got to the jail, we got to the jail, uh, I didn't hardly recognize my father. His head was twice as big his lip was busted, his shoulder was broken, his leg was, uh, Dad, what happened? Because I'd never known him to lose a fight. <laughs> uh, he said he got in a fight in a tavern and he threw a man through a plate glass window and the police came and he started fighting with the police. And as a result of that, you don't fight with the police. You know that old song, I fought the law and the law won. <laughs> well, they beat Dad up. So that was our life. But you know, Jesus it says in Luke, it tells us that the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. And through a co-worker of my dad, he worked at Lunkenheimer Valve Company in Cincinnati, Ohio. He was a skilled, uh, skilled uh, workman. And uh, his friend, Earl Patton at work, kept witnessing to dad for a couple of years. And dad would always tell him, um, if I go into the church, it'll fall in on me because of my drinking and of my sin. And so the witnessing had not uh, helped my dad to over two years, but keep on. You know, when someone is lost, uh, they need to be talked to a lot for a long period of time, some people, and my dad was one of those. On, uh, I remember the night of uh, Monday, it was February 16th, 1953. There was about seven o'clock in the evening, there was a knock at the door. And uh, no one ever came to our house in the evening because of dad's drinking and knowing how he would be belligerent. But it was Errol Patton. <laughs> I thought dad was going to throw him off the porch, but uh, my mom was more gracious and invited him in. And it was Earl and uh, two young people my age, about 15, I was 15 at the time, uh, came into our house and uh, Earl asked dad that they're having special services on Sunday, the, the uh, 22nd of February, and that he, that, uh, he would like 
uh, my mom and my dad and I to go to church. Dad, I thought was going to jump up and hit him, but he didn't. He jumped up and he said, Earl, if you stop bugging me about going to church and being a Christian, talking about Jesus, we'll be there. Now, Dad was an alcoholic, <laughs> but he usually kept his word when he meant something. And so we, on that day, Sunday, uh, February 22nd, 1953, the Edwards family, for the first time as a family, was in church. We, were, we, we lived in northern Kentucky, and we had to go to Cincinnati for the church because it was in the Walnut Hills section of Cincinnati of William Hard Taft and Kemper Lane, Central Baptist Church. The pastor there was Norman H. Wells, tremendous man of God. Anyway, Pastor Wells preached a sermon on the Philippian jailer of Acts chapter 16. And, of course, that's when Paul and Silas is in uh, the Philippian jail. And, and uh, the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And Paul and Silas responded by saying, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Well, that night, the Edwards family, or day, that the Edwards family got saved. And it changed our lives tremendously. Uh, Dad, uh, when we got home that night, threw away all his whiskey bottles, <laughs> had them hidden in nooks and crannies that, throughout the house. And we were discipled by my, f my future wife's father, Obi Denny. And uh, we were like, I remember, we knew absolutely nothing about the Christian life or about church. Uh, but Obi Denny, Carolee's, my wife's, uh, future wife's father, discipled us. Dad then uh, was a, a person who did not require much sleep. He only slept four or five hours every night. I remember after he was saved that uh, I would wake up at two o'clock in the morning and Dad would be sitting on the couch reading his Bible. And he became addicted to the word of God. So God touched his heart. He quit his job at Lunkenheimer Valve Company in Cincinnati and uh, became janitor of the church. My mom and, and he became janitor of the church. So he could go to the Cincinnati Baptist Bible College, which he did. And uh, he, he, he loved languages and he uh, majored in Greek and Hebrew, of all things, and also evangelism. And he got his bachelor, master, and he even got a Ph.D. And so then he became a teacher at the Cincinnati Baptist Bible College and taught there for over 25 years. Also early in his ministry, he felt the Lord leading him to start a church. So he did in Northbrook, uh, a northern suburb of Cincinnati. He started the Northbrook Baptist Church in the 60s. The first year anniversary date, they had over 261 in attendance. And, and so the church grew. In the first five years, over 300 people were saved and added to the church. Isn't it wonderful what Jesus can do? Take an old drunk, <laughs> save him, save his family, and it, it affected our, our lives tremendously, of course. And uh, what a change. I remember about a year after we had been saved, I was in the church in the, in the fellowship hall by myself. And I, I looked up to heaven and I, and I said, Lord, thank you. I'm just so thankful I don't have to uh, have a father who, who's a drunk and in jail fighting the law. And so, Lord, help me to be faithful each day of my life from now on. And so God did help me to be, to, to, to I've always had the goal of uh, being close to the Lord. So it's wonderful what Jesus, the Son of Man, not many people <laughs> wanted us as prospects 
but Jesus did. And he changed our lives. And what a blessing it's been I, uh, from 1953 to the present time. God has helped me and my family, and I'm so thankful that the Lord saves and keeps.